All right, YouTube, today we're going to be breaking down the crucial round 11 win that we had on Karachi Search, map two of the grand finals. I really wanted to take a detailed look at this round specifically simply because of how big it was in terms of us winning uh, this COD championship. It was, you know, New York's map pick. It was a really good setting of the tone for us in Search Destroy in that championship match. And honestly, you know, going up 2-0, winning that map pick for them uh, was a really big blow, in my opinion, for them and it was just something that created a lot of momentum for us, uh, you know, going into the rest of the series. So let's get right into it. Um, obviously, this was a Karachi search where we had some struggles on in the major four qualifiers. We kind of retooled a lot of our search. Uh, we were constantly losing round 11s or game fives uh, on this map. So uh, we really, you know, took a deeper look at this map specifically and wanted to make sure that, you know, we were going to have to mostly play this map a lot in this tournament simply because we expected Invasion Search to be vetoed in most of our series. You know, the only one that we did get to play it on was uh, the New York series, but obviously we knew that they were also a good Invasion Search team. Regardless though, we were going to be playing this map uh, at this tournament, so we figured uh, we retool this. But this specific round was a really wonky one because, uh, as you'll see here, we get naded off the break. So uh, to detail what was going on through our minds here was, uh, this was a play called by Ken. He was like, you know, let's just bang mid here. Uh, trust me, it'll work out. And it was really funny because on the other side of this play, Brandon, who's gonna be the good one alone going top three, he was the one stressing out, you know, we gotta throw a trophy, you gotta be early with it. You gotta use quick grip so you can make sure that you throw it in time because you, New York is a really good nading team, especially in search. So we need to be ready for these mid nades because you know they're coming, especially in this round 11. Uh, what do you know, uh, Ant is the one who throws the trophy. He just gets it out just a little bit late and it blows up Ken. So we start off the round 3v4, it, which is you know an ultimate nightmare in a round 11 because you don't want to be giving them an instant pick like that. For them knowing going into that round that they already were default going to a 4v3 without any you know info or anything that they needed to do apart from those nades. Uh, so it was really an awkward play for, call for us. Now we have to kind of wrap the bomb and just basically go with our default B because uh, you know we're just down a man. We can't you know continue the mid push. I know Ant was probably weak and so was AG from those nades as well. We're probably really lucky that they didn't get you know double or triple nated going off of that break uh, but what do you know we kind of just settle back down in this specific situation uh, it was really crucial for us because we knew about this this new wall bang that they had figured out so this is the the skies wall bang you know it's actually Dante uh, doing it over here but they had done this against Toronto specifically so we knew that we had a game plan for it because we knew that they were going into this match uh, probably going to be doing it because you know B is that you know really common bomb site and you know now that they have something that's kind of game breaking we knew that we had a game plan for it. So uh, they have, you know, Dante doing this wall bang just in case that we were already onto the site. Uh, they're going to have, you know, Sky's top dome over here. And then the other guys, you know, Paco's already, you know, top fire. And, you know, Kiz is already basically short watching their mid push. So they have us kind of converged into this B area. Uh, they haven't really pushed into fountain or mid yet. So uh, we'll talk, take a look at how everything kind of develops. So in this situation, Ant figures, you know, he's going to have to try and make a play for our team. We're down 3v4 in this round. Uh, we need to make a play so that we can get on to B, start planning it. So what he figures he's going to do is just going to go uh, jump over to top AC and then jump over uh, to top fountain, which we would call it. So uh, from this specific position, you know, Dante has actually moved back towards bottom cache. Uh, so he has the push out for us onto this B archway. And Ant has now moved his way onto this blind spot, basically, uh, in top fountain because no one is technically watching top fountain for uh, New York in this specific situation and uh, we'll get into what Ant is going to be doing here. So he's prone on the balk here looking for any type of info on anyone that might be uh, pushing up uh, onto this balk or inside fountain here. He actually doesn't see Kiz at the moment and Kiz is going to be stuck on top of this little vending machine over here. This is going to be really crucial into this round. I personally uh, when I was watching this I thought he was on the other side of this. He, I thought he was like right on this little ledge where the ladder is. Uh, right over here, but he's actually inside the room right now and you know Ant sees the doors open He obviously knows that we op didn't open the doors. It was had to have been one of them So he's assuming that you know 
they had either come through short and opened this door and went, you know, either bought a fountain or into low cash, or they just busted it open and are just still staying short and kind of just baiting Ant in case he was going to go, you know, into this fountain position himself. So what actually happens here is, you know, Ant's going to clear, you know, bottom fountain. He even clears this, this little area here because he's thinking with the door open that they could have pushed inside. He doesn't see anything. He doesn't see Kiz in the corner. He goes back to the balk, prones his way up. Now he gets spotted by Skies. This is really, really important because they now know that he is up here in this top fountain slash top balk position. Uh, you know, he even takes some shots at Skies over here. So uh, it's really important because he now gets away with his life. Obviously, Skies doesn't reach out him, but he still knows that he's there. And from this, I'm actually really surprised that Kiz uh, didn't go over and, you know, at least throw some type of attack over here, or even, you know, Childish knowing that, you know, Ant's here, but I, I probably am assuming from his position, he doesn't want to scam anything away. They're already in a 4v3. Uh, you know, he doesn't want to take a one-on-one -on -one gunfight with, you know, Shotzi of all people, just up in this top fountain area, because if he loses that one-on-one -on -one gunfight, it's just completely up in the air for that round. So what he's probably thinking is that uh, they just have him trapped. Uh, but what happens here is, you know, first Ant, has the smoke for our team and he knows that he wants to get this bomb you know situated for our team because we only have 35 seconds to get this bomb control and he knows with ag having bomb over here in top coop he knows with the wall bang over here he's gonna have to smoke him out because if he goes and, and just plans safe like this he's getting wall banged uh from anyone that might be at this back you know corner trying to wall bang him but what he needs to do in order to you know avoid that is to have someone smoke it out in this case and and he'll smoke out so he can plant just out in the open here making sure that you know he can actually get the bomb down without any shots actually getting on into him so what uh Ann is trying to do over here is uh both smoke and trying to take any timings away from people who might be pushing him on the top dome area or bottom fountain so you know he throws the smoke for ag and now he also throws a nade towards this back uh you know wall bang area ex expecting that they're going to be moving towards this area and to try and just you know tweak them out a little bit uh, and catch them off guard uh, they actually do have a trophy over there so i get stopped by the trophy but what's big over here is skies does see that the smoke is going down and starts shooting through the smoke um, i'm not sure if he does get shots off here but i know that from this position dante is actually still bottom cash and i believe he's actually wall banging ag in this situation so that's why ag ends up getting off bomb in the first place i actually uh didn't notice this in the moment that he was wall banging him i thought it was just you know caesar you know it through the smoke hitting him but it's actually uh dante down in low cash here as you can see these shots are going off so that's really important because not only is he not getting wall banged uh from the you know this new wall bank spot yet he's actually getting wall banged from from bottom cash as well so that's what you know causes ag to get off bomb because he's getting shot and then right here is probably the biggest gunfight uh, or one of the biggest gunfights of the grand finals and it's Ann who pushes down into this bottom fountain area he gets good timing on kids who's actually moving in this specific situation doesn't expect him to be in the corner because he's expecting you know if someone was in that fountain corner they would have probably thrown an attack or child me uh, when i'd given away my position but um you know kids had stayed there and ant just you know rips him centers on him and actually gets the kill uh and this is just a huge kill in general for the round because it's not you know going to be traded effectively right at the beginning because Ant can just go back up towards you know the top fountain it's now a 3v3 we've gotten off bomb now specifically because of the wall bang uh since dante hasn't you know specifically child this yet because Ant has now gone up the stairs he's looking for the you know the quick chow he's looking for the quick trade but he can't find Ant, and it's really hard for dante to you know go back up the stairs now because of the possibility of him getting two-pieced with Ant, you know just in any sort of corner at the top here and he doesn't have a teammate to help him out so caesar had actually gone down towards the, the other wall bang area Area, trying to wall bang uh, Pred off the bomb. But unfortunately for him, you know, AG has gone off the bomb because of the initial wall bang from Dante. Now we are wrapping towards the A side. Uh, actually, Brandon over here at the top third area, he sees Paco rush down towards P1. Uh, he doesn't get the kill onto Brandon. And that's really big because Brandon is able to stay alive and communicate to AG, who's now wrapping towards his P3 area. And he can pick up Paco right away. He, you know, Brandon even gets shots off onto Paco. And this will be an easy kill for AG. 
synergy in this specific situation with you know Paco's back turned. That means a 3v2, and we know that it's a possibility for us to wrap towards the A side now because we don't want to go back towards the B side because we know Skies is over here, and we know that we have killed both of their A side players uh, in Kismet and Paco. So uh, we know that the A side is free, and this makes Dante kind of tweak because first he's looking for you know the possibility of Ant who's still top found, uh, but also he knows that they're wrapping towards the A side with the Paco kill. So he's trying to get on his high horse to get over towards A and Ant is in the position to pick him up. He is covering the mid, uh, you know, rotate from this New York squad. He gets the free kill on, uh, you know, Dante trying to rotate over to A. That's a 3v1. We are already having this A site control and we just know that Skies is over towards this B site. We can play an easy post plant with the bomb down on this A site and it's just kind of basically wraps. There's, you know, really no way for, for you know, Caesar to win this and it was just really, really good playmaking abilities from Ant and from, you know, AG and Brandon both to be reactive on what was going on on the map, uh, specifically, you know, with the wall bangs and specifically with how Ant was able to get into the top fountain area, kind of finesse his life and get away with a kill and his life after that. And uh, we just rotate the bomb. This was a huge round because, you know, we go up in the series 2-0. We win their map pick, Search and Destroy. We win a Search and Destroy in general, which was you know something that we weren't doing uh, throughout the major four qualifiers and major four. But going into COD Champs, we worked on it super hard, and you know we were actually doing pretty well in Search throughout the entire weekend. So you know getting that 2-0 start in the in the grand finals, you know it really created some momentum for us, and we were able to take that obviously in a 5-1 fashion. So really big round, really good uh, playmaking abilities from the entire team, and honestly this round 11 is probably going to go down as one of the more important rounds of s d you know in you know cod history so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this detailed breakdown and i'll see you guys in the next one